Number 20, Lubda Srigalaha. Well, this is a short one. Now, Malati, why don't you start? Kashtana Vyadaha Asit. Should I do sentence by sentence? Or? Yes, why, yes. Do the, yes, do sentence by sentence, but do the whole paragraph. Ah. There was a hunter. There was a hunter. Yes, that's what I'm saying right now. This is getting this is getting easy. Okay, go. Saha ikada. Saha ikada. Mrigayartam vanam gatavan. To, well, how do I would say for the for the purpose to to find? I mean, I would have to translate a little bit freely. Okay, mrigaya mrigaya means hunting. For hunt. Okay, for the purpose of hunting, he went uh, uh, to the forest. He once went to the forest. Yeah. Bahu Kalantaram Saha Bahu Kala Yeah, the Anantaram and Antaram, you have to get that difference because it, their meaning is different. Yeah, yeah Bahu Kala. Go. Yeah. Anantaram Saha Ekam Varaham Drishtavan. After a long time, he saw uh, a, a boar. Mm. Tam, Laksh Tam Lakshya Kritya Saha Bana Prayogam Kritavan. Um, okay, this one here is this is a good word to know because this one is often comes up in commentaries also. Uh, in a slight, it's a slightly different, uh, in a slightly different sense. Here, here, this is the literal meaning, Laksha, Laksha. So Lakshanam, you've heard the word Lakshanam, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, but Lakshya means the thing that you're aiming at, mm. the goal, right? And so Lakshyi Kritya is often used. To, it is a Chvi Samasa, right? Chvi meaning this is Lakshya. And then making laksha, so making the object. In other words, here it means aiming at something. So your aim, the laksha, the laksha is what you're aiming at, the goal. Right. So often in commentaries that uh, they, they they'll use this this exact word lakshi kritya in order to say what the intention, uh, you know, what 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 the purpose of a particular statement is. Like that, so like that. Prayojanam lakshi kritya, like that. And bana prayogam. So the bow, the bana is the bow, and prayogam oh, well, is bana the. Is it actually an arrow? An arrow. So he strung the arrow, aiming at him. Yeah. So then, aiming at the boar, he 
And now this here, you see, this is a, well, I mean, he made the use of the arrow. No. Okay, it was a bit, a bit, uh, you know, but but if you look at the original there, which I did check out, there is used a very poetic expression. So he simplified a great deal here. You know, well, you could have been, uh, he, he could have said something else, you know, other ways of saying he, he shot an arrow. Kshiptavan, it was a banam prakshiptavan, kshiptavan, you know, there's throwing an arrow. You say that you, you do use that with arrows. Go on. Maharasya Shariri Mahan Vranaha Jataha. Okay, vocabulary here. Uh, so that's a um, a, a wound, a, a yeah, big wound. Right. Yes. Yeah. Appeared uh, in, in, on the body of the boar. That's right. Vranitaha Varaha Kopena Vyadhasya Upari. Apagramanam Kritavan. The wounded um, boar angrily attacked, made an attack towards the hunter. Yeah, upon the hunter. Well, this is Upari with Shashti. Upari. Yeah, here you have this case. This is what we were just doing in the in the manual, right? We're having the uh, use of Kri with a verbal noun, Akramanam Kritavan. And so now this wouldn't take a direct object, right? This is what this is what I was just doing in the in the manual. So akramanam, you don't say, you know, varaham akramanam kritavan, or, or vyadham akramanam kritavan. That you, you you don't use with the verbal nouns. You don't make a double accusative, right? So here he's used the expression vyadasya upari, but you could also say vyadasya. Just simply say vyadhasya akramanam kritavan. You know that that's probably less less desirable than Vyadas mm -hmm. Upari. Nevertheless, it's often that you have this verbal noun, and the object of the verbal noun here will be in the Shashti Vibhakti. Okay, go. Sviyabihi tikshnabihi dangstrabihi tasya shariram vidirnaman. With his own um uh, uh claws no dungstra dungstra is your canine teeth Corn. your big teeth oh, your sharp teeth your the teeth is sharp sharp with, yeah dungstra we often use for fangs right mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. snake has dungstra and actually in the in the 11th chapter of the gita this word comes up several times that the universal form has dungstra and he's chewing up all the soldiers <laughs> mm. Go ahead. So with, with his sharp, with his sharp uh, um, teeth, he split his body into half. That's right. He, 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 he split his body. Yeah, it really means splitting in two. Tena vyadaha mritaha. Bana prahara vidanaya varaha api mritaha. So um, this, yeah. Sorry. In pain, uh, from the pain of the arrow, the the boar also died. That's right. Pain, vedana. With, with the pain, yeah. Yeah, vedana means from the 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 the, the pain of of the hit. You know the uh, the the the. Um, I guess wound would probably be the best, but you know, because, because being hit by the arrow, the the uh, you know, the prahara means hitting somebody or beating someone. So vana prahara, you know, I, I'm 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 you know, I often have to look up. These are you know sometimes. Uh, anyway, no pro, no more further comment. Who's who's uh, anybody next? If Shamantika, why don't you do the next one? <clears throat> uh. Can I ask a yes, question? Please. Sure. So in a uh, previous paragraph, uh, uh, 
Actually, you are telling all the time so uh, easy, so easy, but it is not so easy. And when somebody is uh, doing very quickly, it's very difficult to follow. Okay, all right. Maybe I'm it's sorry. easy Please if it me. is slow, right. done, done slower, you know? Okay. So, sorry. for example, uh, the sent, yeah. Let's go back. So, for example, Svi, Ya, Bihi, etc., I didn't get it. So where which because one? Maybe it is, maybe it's easy, but it was stuck too quickly. All right, sure. So which one are you asking about? You want to go through it again? Uh, actually, uh, right now, yeah, could be possible. Yes, why not? All right. So kashchana vyadha asit. That's easy, right? Kashchana vyadha asit. There was a hunter. Yes, that's it. <laughs> So most, it's really most, easy. No most, most of the problem arises from vocabulary that we don't know, right? So sa ekada mrigaya artham vanam gatavan. So artham, we know this word artham, right? So for the purpose of hunting, he once went to the forest. And bahu kala anantaram. So in, in the original story, in the original story, it says that he was very hungry because he hadn't found any 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 game anywhere. And then suddenly, uh, um, uh, the word sukara is used, a varaha, a, a boar, a wild boar, as big as a black mountain, <laughs> appeared in front of him. So, bahu kala anantram sa ekam varaham drishtaman. All right, I don't think anybody has a problem with that one. So, tam lakshi kritya. So, I explained this word here. It means aiming, you know, lakshi. Laksha means the aim or the goal. Right, so the laksham, so everybody has a laksham. So lakshanam, the word laksha means actually comes, is a one word for seeing, right? So laksha, to be seen. So tam lakshi kritya sa vana prayogam kritavan. So vana is an arrow, and prayogam means use, use. Prayogam means the use. So he used an arrow. So he made use of an arrow. Right, so here you see again, so even though we didn't, you know, this use of kridatu with the verbal noun, so prayogam here is a verbal noun, it's not the same as the ones that we were learning. It's a different kind of verbal noun, but nevertheless, it's a verbal noun all the same. So this kind of construction is often, and I said this a hundred times now, this is a, a, often a, you know, a, a, a modern construction that's calced on modern Indian languages. It's, up, it's possible in Sanskrit, but it becomes more and more used in the modern languages because they just borrow the Sanskrit word and then they use the Hindi or Bengali or Gujarati version of the verb to create. Anyway, so he made use of an arrow. In other words, he shot, aiming at the boar, he shot an arrow. This is what we would say, he shot an arrow. That's why I was saying that here, you could say banam prakshiptavan or kshiptavan would probably have been a little bit better you know, or akshipat, ak akshepayat, something like this. He threw, he shot an arrow. Anyway, varahasya sharire mahan brana jataha. So here, jataha, we've been looking at this word also. This is, so these are good. Um, yes, all right, okay. I'm not saying whether it's simple or not simple, but certainly the lessons, these things are coming up again and again. So this is the way the language that we have in this particular book. But jataha, right? So jataha means was born. But being born means come into existence. So Branaha Jata, there became, you know, a, a, a Malati translated it appeared. Well, that's good, you know. A, a, but anyway, there was, there became, you could say became, there came into existence. There was born a great wound on the body of the boar. Now, Vranitaha, so Vranita is a past participle here, obviously, you know, that itaha ending there that makes it clearly a, or pretty clearly a past participle. The wounded bore angrily, you know, tritiya vibhakti being used in the sense of uh, adverb, adverb, kopena with anger, so angrily eh, made an attack upon the Hunter. So here, upari is the post position. So we were looking at post positions with the sh with the accusative case a little bit in the second chapter of the manual. 
but here it's with the most of them use the Shashti Vibhakti. So we'll see the Shashti Vibhakti in the fourth chapter. And I don't know if I talked about it very much there, but certainly I'll uh, I'll make sure that it happens this time around. Right? Vyadasya Upari Akramanam Kritavan. And this here again is that construction of the verbal noun with kridhatu. So sviya bihi. So sviya. I don't. Know, this is also coming up in the sixth, in the fourth chapter of the manual with the sixth uh, case. You have sviya. You have tadiya, madiya. This ia suffix, right? So sviya. You make it. It's it's a possessive. If I say tadiya, madiya, asmadiya, yushmadiya. Right, uh, Bhavadiya, right, Bhavat for Bhavan, Bhavadiya, Mam, Madiya, my. So it's another way of saying my. And so Sviya is also coming in there because Sviya, his own, so it's referring back to the subject. So Sviya be with his own, right, because this is here, you have the, 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 uh, the Varaha is the subject still carried over. So with his own, so that when you, you use the reflexive pronoun, uh, and this is also a reflexive pronoun, even though it's, you know, functioning as an ad, as a, well, it's functioning pronominally, it's referring back to the, um, back to the varaha. You could say, you know, uh, swabihi, but you don't see that very much. You could say swabihi, feminine, Instead of saying swiyabihi, you say swabihi or swaih, right? Swaihi in masculine or neuter. But this is feminine because the dangstra is feminine. So the dangstra means the fans. So with his own sharp fangs, <laughs> he split the body of the tasya vyadhasya. Vyadhasya tasya. So tena vyadaha mritaha. So by that, he was killed. Vana prahara vedanaya varaha api mritaha, and the bull, uh, the the boar also died from the pain on account of the pain. Here, tritiya vibhakti being used in a causative way by the pain or on account of the pain arising from the wounds of the arrow. He on a on account of the uh, arrow hit the hit you know the being hit by the arrow he died. All right, now you do it, Semantika. You can go yeah, at your own Thank speed. you so much. Tasmin Eva Vane Kaschana Shrigalaha Steed. In this very forest, uh, some uh, jackal, uh, uh, how to say, <laughs> existed. Yeah, he was there. Was there was just if you say there mm -hmm. was mm -hmm, right. Uh, Saha, quite, often, uh, yeah. quite often you would see ah seat in this kind of way when you have a. I, I talk about this also. I think in the first chapter of the manual there that he says ah seat. You have the ah seat at the very beginning. Ah seat. You know, in order to make it there was right. Mm -hmm. in, but it, it, this is this is all right. I guess. Go ahead. I mean, you say, Asit, uh, Asit, Tasmineva Vane, Kashchara Shrigalaha. That would be actually more appropriate, better Sanskrit. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, Saha Ativa uh, uh, Lubdhaha. He was uh, uh, very hungry. Well, yeah, he was very hungry. That's actually the original, in the original story, but Lubdha means greedy. Ah, so it's greedy because yeah. actually I guess it's, 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 it's actually a past participle, right? It's a past participle from uh, lub. Ah, yeah. So like lobha, we know. Lobha, lobha, right? But mm -hmm. lubda is a past participle, so lub, lub is actually intransitive. So uh, you know, you know, you, you, you lobati, lobati is it transitive or intransitive? But Anyway, lubdaha, sa ativa lubdaha, this is a past participle. Normally it would be the thing that you're greedy for that would go lubda, right? But here it's being used in an active way. So he was it's used as an adjective meaning greedy. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, it's interesting because in Russian, uh, we have uh, the word for love, uh, любовь. It seems uh, quite similar. Yes, well, the, well, <laughs> greed and love, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. karma and loba, they usually go together. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it could be really uh, like from same root coming from the, in the European. Let's just give it a look here for the sake of, I was, I received a lube. Okay, well, I don't see that. I thought lube is the dato, is it? Oh, I see why I didn't do that. This is because I have to remember uh, to change the... Uh, can, can you change the screen, please? Yeah. Okay, just let me do it. Uh, anyway, I think it's good to look at the dictionary. I mean, I know that uh, for some people who, you know, that, that there's nothing new, but if I'm looking at the dictionary, it's usually a question of my own uh, I, there's something that I want to clarify for myself. But anyway, here you see lub, that's the root. So the, the actual is the, you know, um, so here, lobed ha, lulob, so lubd wa. So lub, is it here? What does it say here? Lubhyati to be perplexed. So, so here you can see from these that this is a that in these in this particular case it's all intransitive. But then here, and here you see ah yes this is good. So here to be look at this. So to desire greatly or to long for to be interested in. So it takes either the dative or the locative. So that's intransitive also. So usually the usually when you have um, when you have a past participle from an intransitive verb then they're used actively rather than passively, right? Just like, you know, but, you know bhutaha. So bhutaha, bhavati is intransitive. So bhutaha, you have a past participle, a past passive participle from an intransitive verb. So how can you have a passive from an intransitive verb, right? Think about it. A passive, a passive, a, a passive, uh, you know, you, a passive indicates that it must be uh, a transitive, right? I eat a fruit, a fruit is eaten by me. So eat is transitive, I eat a fruit, and then the fruit is eaten by me, that you can make a passive out of it. But I, um, I, I bathe, right? So I bathe, that's intransitive. So now it is bathed by me. Well, automatically then you start thinking, well, this is a transitive and something else is, you know, it's not, it's not, you follow what I'm saying here? Maya snataha, right? So maya snataha, aham snami, that's the aham snami, I bathe. Maya snataha, but snataha is past participle of an intransitive verb. So how can, so it's, it's an, what we call an impersonal use. We're calling it impersonal because how can you have a past participle of an intransitive verb? So when you have an intransitive verb in the passive participle, then it takes on an active sense. So maya snataha, I took a bath, right? So this is, or maya, uh, you know, uh, uh, here in this particular case, uh, so we have two kinds of those, those in, you know, usages. Uh, sa snataha, you can say maya snataha or aham snataha. Maya snataha, aham snataha. So by me it was bathed, or I am bathed, right? So here in this case you have lubdaha being an intransitive verb, and it's being it's being used. The past passive participle is being used, and so it becomes an adjective meaning greedy. Let's just, <laughs> so, I mean. Forgive me if that explanation was any it was it was extra complicated, but it's a it's a, a feature of Sanskrit that is uh, quite uh, is somewhat interesting. So lubda, I, you know, this use of bewildered and confused. I very rarely see that, but greedy, covetous, avaricious, desirous of lock, longing for. And see here, here again, you see it says either in a compound or with the locative. 
All right. So if you have greedy or longing for something, it's intransitive. And if you want to, if you want an object for it, you put it in the locative, in the subtomy. And here you see also that lubda, it means a hunter. Usually you don't say lubda, you say lubdaka, right? If I put a lubdaka. A hunter, you see, a covetous or greedy man, but usually it means it's used to mean a hunter. So that's a real old me goes back to Mahabharat. All right. Continue. <laughs> Agresara. <clears throat> uh, uh, okay. Uh, Saha Shrigalaha. Uh, Aharan Veshanam uh, Kurvan Tatra Eva Agatavan. So this uh, uh, jackal, having done. Um, well, it's a present uh, participle, so you know, the present participle. Ah, do, do, yes, uh, doing what? Ahara uh, is food, right? Yeah. Then, um, so it's a plural, plural uh, accusative. Aharan. Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's a compound word, ahar and veshnam. So we were talking, we've been talking a lot about these, these uh, verbal nouns. So these verbal nouns are more often, uh, are more often used with, with compounds. So in the, in the previous example here, I was saying that vyadasya uh, upari akramanam kritavan. So here they used, we used a, a prepositional or a postpositional phrase, but usually it's with the shashti vibhakti or alternatively compounded. So here anveshana means looking for or searching and ahara, so ahara anveshanam, the searching for food. So doing mm. the searching for food. So it's again, it's a it's kridatu with the, with the verbal noun, but this time the object of the verbal noun is in the compound word. So it's a shashti tat purusha, right? Shashti tat purusha aharasya, Anveshanam kurvan. So doing the searching for of food, doing the searching for food. So he just saying while seeking food. Mm -hmm. He gave, he came uh, to that very place. Yes. Uh, Vyadhasya uh, Varahasya Cha uh, Muritam uh, Shari Saha Drishtavan. Uh, so he uh, saw uh, bodies, dead bodies of uh, a boar and a hunter. Yeah, so now here, this is a little bit, I would, I, I you know, this using the singular here. So sometimes, they, yeah. you know, because there are two bodies. So I would, can you tell me what the dual would be? Uh, <clears throat> so it's masculine, right? Uh, no, but it doesn't. Neuter. Oh, it's neuter. Mm, okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, it uh, should be Marite um, Sharire. Um, yeah, so probably he didn't, you know, he, uh, uh, you know, out of kindness to the uh, beginning students. That he, oh boy, what was that? Something just fell, excuse me. I made a movement and something just made a big crashing sound. Something fell from the table. Okay, so uh, here, so Vyadasya Varahasya Chamrite Sharire Sadrishtavan. He didn't want to use the A ending there because of the problem with it being similar to the Saptami Vibhakti. So I suppose he was doing it out of kindness for beginning students. Go on then. Tat Drishtva. Saha Chintitavan, having seen that, he thought, Adya Mama Devam Anuku 
Lanam Asti. Uh, today, uh, my faith uh, is pleasing. Favorable. Favorable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, yet heshtam uh, aharaha vina yasam uh, uh, loved her. <coughs> loved her. Okay, so I don't know if he was doing it on purpose, but he have lubdaha here and have lovedaha here. So they're both past participles, so you can see how that ba in the datu. So this is lub, lub, and this is lub datu. So lub, we're often using love as our paradigm, right, for the atmanepada. Anyway, it means to get something, right? So lovedaha, but lub, lubate is transitive. So in this particular case, the Okay, go ahead. See what you do with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it's yatha ishtam. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, okay, yatha ishtam is a very commonly used one. Uh, you know, so yatha ishtam is as desired. Ah, but, yeah. So as desired, but it can also mean it can also mean sufficient or enough, right? It's used especially in the modern languages. It's used that way, you know. Like it says, "Did you get enough food?" Yateshtam, yateshtam kaditavan, right? Like this. Did you eat? So you can see the similarity there. Yateshtam kaditavan. So especially in the relationship with food, did you get enough food? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, here, so, you know, as desired, either way. So, mm -hmm. enough food uh, uh, is obtained. Vinayasam, uh, I'm not sure. We, we had this a couple of times. Ayasa. So, ayasa means effort. We also have, we have ah. ayasa and we also have prayasa. So, I think that you, several of the people in the, the, um, the Jiva Institute had a little bit of a connection with a, a, a teacher of, uh, of um, Hindi who runs an organization called Prayasa in, in Vrindavan. Well, prayasa means effort. So he was, uh, you know, like the students making an effort to, to do good works. He called it Prayasa. You can look it up. They have a web page. No, prayasa vinayasam. So ayasa means effort, and vinayasam means without effort. So ah, I understand now. This is vina without. So I did not recognize ayasa because of this vina. <laughs> well, it's it's true because often you see you might think it's a v and nayasam, mm -hmm. but it's here. It's, it's vina ayasam, and it's not a compound. It's a two separate words. You know, it's, it could have been done. You know, vina usually comes after the word. So you could have ayasang vina. So it mm -hmm. could have been ayasang vina. You could say ayasang vina or vinayasang, same thing. Okay. And the, interestingly, this <clears throat> uh, uh, love is uh, maybe, uh, how to say, with this uh, loop, um, more or less same uh, source. They yeah. have same source, I think, right? Because one is like active, another like passive, like getting and being eager to, to, to obtain, right? Well, yes, this, you know, that's one thing about, uh, yes, you, 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 well, certainly that is a possibility. There are many <laughs> words like that in Sanskrit, actually, where the, a slight mm. difference of, of, of uh, one letter or another letter, and, and you know, it's like that, that may, may have been a different pronunciation and then uh, the different pronunciation, the words separate out in meaning also. You know, the same word is pronounced differently by different people, and then it takes on a different meaning. But, but there is no it, system, yes, how we can uh, get, uh, how to say, uh, no, it wouldn't, this I don't type. Think it would, no, no, this would, be, uh, this would be something that would be very archaic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eshaha uh, aharaha. Bahu uh, dinana krite pariyaptaha 
bhavishyati. Uh, this food uh, will be bhavishyati to the future. Mm -hmm. Remember Pariyaptaha. So you see Aptaha at the end. So Apta is the ba ba the, the uh, past participle from Apta to. Mm -hmm. so ap like also obtain, like lap. All right. That's right. But this was, if you remember in the Bhagavad Gita in the first chapter, Pariyapta, uh, you know, um, um, Apariyaptam, uh, Balam Bhishma Virakshitam Paryaptam Midame Tesham Balam Bhima Virakshitam Aparyaptam Tadasmakam Balam Bhishma Virakshitam Paryaptam Midame Tesham Balam Bhima Virakshitam Remember that one? First chapter of the Gita? Yes, the, the, this shloka is a uh... Uh, familiar, but uh, exactly the meaning of the <laughs> well, word. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so the things is that so pariyaptam that was the what a word had had a double meaning there. Anyway, here pariyaptam means enough, sufficient. So there, uh, what Duryodhan was saying, he was saying that we have a pariyaptam balamasmakam pariyaptam idam So that pariyaptam it meant. In there, in that particular case, it meant something different from what it means here. Pariyaptam means enough. So pariyapta means so what the what the commentators in that verse in the Gita were saying is that the both meanings you know and they took it they some interpreted according to one meaning and some according to the other and some you know took both meanings and you know one is the favorable meaning one is an unfavorable meaning so whether Duryodhan was thinking you know positively or negatively or whether he was saying something positive but underlying meaning was negative right so apariyapta insufficient it would be. Right, mm -hmm. so he's it means either insufficient or unlimited. So here he it means sufficient. So sufficient. So for many days, this food for many days. Krite here means four. Right. Ah. Right. So krite is a big. How can we understand that this is four? Yeah, I can't explain that exactly why this is a past participle from kri, but but uh, when used in the Saptami mm -hmm. vibhakti, krite. So I think that what it is actually, I think it's a chaturthi vibhakti from kri dot, just the the, the dot kri krite, and that would be a chaturthi. So for for making mm -hmm. like that. But anyway, oh, if you just yeah. translate this is with it goes with the shashti vibhakti and it's acting like a post position, right? For mm -hmm. the sake for many days, right? So this food is enough for many days. This food will be enough for many days. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, before Aptaha, this Parya, what is it, Parya? Well, usually Pari, pari means around. So Pari, pari has a sense mm -hmm. of around, like Parivartate. Ah, like, it is a, uh, like an internal Sanhi, Pari. Now I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pari okay. Apte. Yeah, that's right. It's internal Sanhi. Ah. It's, it's Pari, which is a, one of, Pari is one of the Upasargas. Mm -hmm. Now it's clear. Thank you. Ataha pratidinam api kinchi deva kadami iti. Therefore, <clears throat> uh, every day, uh, how to translate api here? Yeah, api is not easy to translate here. So, for uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, even every day, yes, to get it, uh, get it right. so, you know, in such cases, I would just say, don't bother trying to translate it. Okay, so, so uh, therefore, I'll eat kadami, um, uh, uh, like a little bit, kinchit eva, right? That's right, Maybe. so every day I'll eat just a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's planning to, he's got it, he's got it all planned out. Okay, Vinod Vani, you have the third paragraph here, the third and last paragraph. Okay. Anantaram saha vyadasya shariram parishilitavan. So when I looked up parishilita in the dictionary, it means like treated well, 
but I don't know if that is appropriate for this sentence because it says thereafter he treated the body of the hunter very well. Does that make any okay. sense? Okay, no, no, that's, that, that's, I think that parishilita, parish, you know, you know how we have anushilanam, right? You know, anushilanam, like Krishna bhakti anushilanam, right? That says uh, Krishna anushilanam bhakti ruchate. No. So let, why don't we, let's hear, I think what we do then in this case, you see, if, if the Sanskrit me, if the Monia Williams doesn't do the trick, what you have to do is you have to go and give a look to the, let's just see what Pari Silana is here. So touch, contact, intercourse with, application or attachment, pursuit of, study. Okay. So let's just see if we can just, just I just have, um, you know, I keep, like, I think I most have made have mentioned already once before that, um, oh, sorry, here's Sanskrit. We're running out of time, so I don't want us to. Okay, well, just, uh, well, let me, all right, go, you go ahead, keep, all right, uh, uh, just, just let me do this here. Okay, here, Hindi word net, let's just see that. this is. Oh, well, no, okay. All right, Parishil, this study is good. Just, just. Well, no, Maldi says something. What did you say, Maldi? I said to investigate, to investigate the body. Something That's like right, that. something like that, investigating okay. the body. Tasha, Shari Rasya, Parshve, Chapaha, Patitaha, Asit. So, Chapaha, the bow, was fallen, Parshve, by the side of his body. Yeah. Is that okay. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you if you want us to stop, just say something. Okay. Yeah. Well, here, so patita asit. It you know, I mean, was fallen. It it was lying there that you could say. You know, it was it it, it would it mean it, right. it, the word is fallen, but you you say it was lying there. Okay. Chape, charma. Nirmita Rajuhu Badha Asit. So Raju means the rope. We're talking about the bowstring. Yeah. Atta attached on the bow was made of leather. Good. Charma Nirmita. Yeah. So okay. Nirmita. So the Nirmita is coming from Ma. So we've had a couple of times uh, Nirmana, right? Nirmana. So Nirmana. You know, nirmana means construction, like you have, you know, mandira nirmana, like that. We, I think that was the one before, remember, they were building a temple. And uh, that's when the, the, the uh, monkey came and sat on the, on the split piece of wood. Right? So anyway, here, so charma nirmita, so nirmita is a, is a past participle made of charma, meaning leather. Go ahead. Okay. Tat drishtva shringalaha. Oh, so, shringala. Don't say shringala. Shrigala. Shrigala. Today, uh, uh, no. Having seen this, the jackal, I'm assuming, said or thought. He doesn't say there. Uh, chinti uh, Devan, he says at the end there. He's going to say after the et, he'll say Chinti Oh, it's way, it's way after there. Okay. Aja etan charmanaha. Rajum Kadami. So I don't know why he's using present tense, but anyway, today I'm eating the string, this string which is made of leather. Yeah, right? well, he would say, I mean, Kadami, you actually in Sanskrit, you do get often, the, you know, the present tense being used uh, kind of uh, rather broadly. But here, so I, he's what really probably best would be Kadani, right, using lot. But uh, Kadami is just say, expressing his, or he could say uh, Kadeya, you know, he could use the Vidi Ling also, right? So it, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, his intent, I, 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 you know, rather than you, rather than you, I guess you could use the future also, Kadishyami, but uh, I'm I'm eating this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm eating this now. So he's gonna you know he's just using the present to indicate that he's that his intention. In, okay. the, in they often say in the commentaries that uh, the present is being used uh, you know with the with a past meaning or with a future meaning like that, 
there's a little bit of fluctuation that's permitted there in Sanskrit, which is more more than in other languages. Charmanaha here, Charmanaha means is the Shashti Vibhakti of Charma, right? So it's yeah, means love. Is it, is it feminine? Pardon? Uh, I mean, uh, 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 I see uh, Eta is feminine. So I'm thinking, what is else feminine here? Raju. Raju. Yeah, so Raju. Uh, what is Raju? Raju. I did not, did not get uh, the yeah, translation. Raju, what is it? Uh, Raju, Raju, I think. Raju is, I think Raju is frequently, uh, is also sometimes, let's see, I think it's sometimes written with a long U. No, well, it's just, yeah, Raju feminine, right? So that's why here you see here also feminine Raju with a long U. And so that you see the accusative, so that he's, you know, Vedic, Rajvam, Rajvaha. So the genitive is Rajvaha. So it's declined like, a, you know, there, there's very few feminine words with a short U. There's a few more with a long U. And so Rajvaha, Rajvam in the Saptami Vibhakti. Anyway, so mm -hmm. Etam Rajum Charmanaha. So Charmana is a Shashti. It's a Charman. It's neuter. Charmani. It's like Brahma Shabda. Continue. Anyat Sarvam Paschat. Kadami iti chintintavan. So he thought, and I, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Anyat, another day, I will eat the rest. Well, Anyat, no, just the rest of the other, everything else, paschat, later, kadami, I'm eating. Oh, it's just like in later. English, we also say in English, right? We use the present continuous to mean the future. I am going tomorrow. Right, so I am going is present continuous, but we mean tomorrow, right? Yeah, so, so uh, Anyat is translated later. Anyat. Anyat. No, Anyat here is going with Sarvam. Oh. Just like we have Anyat Kinchit, right? Anyas, Anyat Kopi, we've been seeing that sometimes. So Anyat Sarvam, everything else. So in that particular case, Anyat can be, means else. Okay, and what is Paschat? Paschat, well, Paschat is just, Paschat is, you know, obviously it's coming, it's a kind of a Panchami Vibhakti there in the original sense, but here it just means later. It's an adverb. Okay, I didn't, I, I couldn't find that. You word. can also say, you can have also, you can have it with a, you using it with another, you're like, Tat Paschat, Tat Paschat, after that. Okay, keep going. Go on. Okay. Cha Pascha, a Tom. Um, kotim muke sta payitva saha dantahi rajum jagdavan. So, um, chapasha etam kotim means the end, the end of that bow. Yeah, the, the end of that, having the placed the end of that bow in his mouth, right? Yeah. We got that, everybody? Saha, <laughs> he, dantai, he, with his teeth, rajum, uh, what is this? Oh, he ate, jagdavan, he ate yeah. the bow with his teeth. Yeah, so jagdavan is, not, you know, we don't usually see that in the present tense, but, uh, uh, and yeah, it's not a, not a very common verb, actually, uh, but, uh, I guess, I, well, I'm not sure, you know, maybe the, it might be common in some parts of India. But anyway, Jagdavan just means ate. So he ate or chewed on the rope with his teeth after placing the, you know, one tip of the bow. You know, the bow has two ends. So these ends are called koti. This word koti, this, this uh, you know, the, it, the original meaning is limit or tip, right? So that's why koti, the word meaning koti, the number koti, that used to be at one time, apparently, that was the highest number that they could think of. So a koti, even 10 million. So now, of course, you have higher numbers than koti, but koti means the limit, the, 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 the limit number. 
just a short comment. Yeah. I, I found for Jack Davan, um, half eat. So that means because it, once it's fully eaten, then the thing breaks. So it's like half eaten. So maybe it could be translated as he started eating because it, it, it was like partially eaten. Yeah, well, uh, okay. Well, we, uh, let's see, Jag. Jagda, eaten. So really, see, the thing is here, you can see right away, it's given some special meaning. Yeah, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I didn't see. So Jagda, here you have that it's eaten. And this is all very old, you see. But I don't see half eaten there anywhere. Okay, well, that's uh, we'll take it under advisement there. We'll think about that. Okay, go on. Parantu yada rajuhu bhagna tada chapasya kotihi shri galasya mastakam vidirya bahihi asa a agata so then but when the rope the bowstring broke bhagna tada then uh the end uh koti chapasha the end of the bow um let's see go over here to vidirya it tore apart must to come the head of the jackal um, and and then that bowstring, Bahi Agata, Agata, Agata came out of his head. I mean, the original story says that the bowstring went through his mouth and pierced his head and came out the back. Well, it's not the bowstring, it's the koti. Oh, the bow, the bow. Yeah, the I'm not quite sure. I have a hard time understanding this myself. He, he, he you know, if he's chewing on the string, then not, you would think that the bow would he well he's chewing on the end of the okay i get it so he's chewing he's he's chewing on the string where it's tying the the end of the bow so right. when he breaks this when he breaks the string then the bow snaps apart and it, it, it and it, the the tip of the bow goes into his mouth and through his head yeah okay Yuck. springs in, springs out Okay, Shigalaha Tada Taya Veda Naya Takshane Evam Ritaha Abhavat. So Shigala, the jackal, then uh, Veda Veda Naya with pain at that very moment, Takshane at that very moment, Eva Ritaha Abhavat, he died. Yeah, ending in the customary fashion. <laughs> okay, that was that, that last one, Taya Vedanaya. So here you see again the use, you know, by means of that pain or through that pain, something like, you know, it's got this, you know, the this here is where an instrumental and the Panchami Vibhakti, the kind of the Triti and Panchami kind of have a bit of, you know, crossover, as is often the case. Pronounce the ah here, Vinod Mani. Uh, Shrigalaha, you know. Shrigalaha, yeah, I keep mixing it up with the other word that's similar. Yeah, Shrigara, um, we have Shringara. Oh, I we've had, know. in the last sentence, in the last sentence, in the last story, we had something very similar that implied that the pain caused him to die. Is is that what they intend? Uh, that doesn't make sense. I would just say he, he died in great pain, but you should say due to that great pain, he died. Well, it, yeah, that you're quite right, because it could just be saha, right? The, the, the idea of tritya vibhakti instrumental being the, you know, the verb, you know, having the, being associated with, you know, with, um, it can either be instrumentality, instrumentality or a com com accompaniment. So in the uh, with the in the accompaniment of that pain, he died. Right. So tayavi danaya. So I think that's probably a better understanding than than just simply to say that that uh, he died on account of that pain. 
but yeah, but we had it earlier in the same story, right? We had we had it. Where was it? Here, vana prahara vedanaya varaha apimritaha. So here, this case here, it would look more like what you were just saying, that uh, it's that on account of the pain of the uh, the hit of the arrow, and he also died. Well, I had that file open, but I, I had to turn my computer off. So I guess- oh, So there's no class next week, is that correct? Yeah, so there's, we're gonna be stopping the class. So we were just discussing beforehand what we're going to do next. And so, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if Shamantika was listening to my discussion with Malati, but uh, we were talking about where to go after we finish. So there's three more stories, I think three or four more after this. There's actually six, but anyway, no, oh, we're almost more. done. Okay, well, six more, that's still quite a bit. Eh? Six weeks, that's quite a bit of time. So we have a lot of time to think about it, but I was just wondering where we go after this. And anyway, it doesn't really matter. I don't think we can have any, but I was just thinking that, you know, I was, I was, uh, I was, the, the reason I, I was favoring the Sanskrit Bharati ones is because uh, this is all, you know, Sanskrit Bharati, the stories that are there for children in the third and fourth year books, I would say probably the third year book would be the best one. In the third year book, then there are some, you know, there are stories like the, of more kind of uh, ordinary subjects, you know, like the geography of India and, uh, you know, some, some historical stories and other things like that, you know, going, you know, leaving aside the, uh, the Panchatantra for a little while and getting some other kinds of, uh, uh, some other kinds of, of, uh, of, accounts but some of the but a lot of those the you know there are panchatantra stories also mixed in with all that stuff and the other book i was talking about that also has uh you know other material besides uh, panchatantra stories so uh, i thought that that was you know to expand our horizons a little bit the one okay so we're done yes and uh, only i would like to ask too difficult because difficult stuff they already have in the pictures in Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, uh, you're, you're not very clear there. Can you say again? I'm, I'm saying uh, please uh, uh, let's not read something too difficult because difficult stuff we already have in Bhagavad Gita reading, right? Okay. Yeah, well, of course, I, I lose sight. You have to forgive me. I, I, I do lose sight a little bit about, you know, of, of the level of the students' uh, capacities. So, uh, you know, uh, so it's good that you remind me, you know, because sometimes, you know, the, the thing is that in every class, every class has, you know, this is the tendency. I, I've noticed this in myself in the past. In a class, you have people of different levels of advancement. And this teacher tends to favor, you know, not just not not to favor in in uh, you know, but to just to be naturally inclined to the most advanced student, because that's closer to where he is, or she is. So uh, it's you know you have to you have to you know, but you have to be more careful and uh, you know to keep a, a, a to the middle road. And not to... yeah, and as uh, this is a, like a beginner's class, that's why I'm asking so that even beginners can <laughs> well, understand. I mean, right? All of you, uh, well, you may you may consider yourself beginners, but you've been around for a, a while and you're making good progress. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm I'm always I'm always overestimating your capacities. <laughs> <laughs> I would but like I to, to be say better, but it is have... like this. I, uh, okay, Malati. So we have stories which I think are perfect for that purpose because we have been reading them a few years ago in the summer. They're really, they're very funny. I mean, they're entertaining and they have a good amount of vocabulary, but they're not too difficult. I think they're perfect for, I just have to get them from Ananda Mohan. Okay, great. Short stories similar to this, not right, much. Well, I, don't think, I think it's okay. I mean, this, the, the, uh, as I was noticing today, he, he, there is a progression. In this book, also in this Panchatantra book, there seems to be some progression. This this story, there were a couple of you know things in this one. There were easy sentences, but then at the same time, there were a few new, uh, more difficult sentences, longer sentences with more uh, components in them. So uh, there does seem to be some progression here. 
And it's okay, you know, I mean, if a story is easier then everybody feels happy because it was easy to get. <laughs> and, uh, and also, uh, you know, we can go through it quickly. It's not going to slow us down. And then we go on to the next one and hopefully the next one will be, you know. That's more, true. More and that would encourage also more students to join. If it's too difficult, you know, then. That's then true. It's, well, at it's this too, point, I don't think. You have to look happen. up so much vocabulary. It's, it's more fun, you know, if it's not too difficult. Yeah, that's. I agree. Really yes. Because like the Bhagavad Gita commentary, you do it all. But, but the fact is that I don't learn if someone else does it all. I need to participate myself. So that's the, the glory of easy sentences, you know. Okay. Well, one, uh, you know, the, the teaching is also something, a learning process. <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm also I'm more than I'd happy like to, to get feedback. I, okay. I, actually, I'd like to add that uh, uh, actually in a Gita reading, when you're really explaining, it is easy to follow. Uh, but uh, only follow so i can't it's too much of new things so i'm not learning i'm not remembering late, later but uh, when something is easy like here it's uh, more or less sticking in the mind yeah well i still you know i still haven't been able to quite uh, um come up with a you know to the actual speaking of sanskrit this is the thing that, that to actually be able to get it to a point where we're you know it maybe requires an entirely different setup uh for for uh, spoken sanskrit i never really did you know that's the thing i never really underwent a, a course uh, where spoken sanskrit in, you know i was talking to my wife who's also a, 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 a french teacher and uh, she she did a number of different kinds of things, you know, for for teaching. Uh, she was once teaching in Berlitz, you know, the Berlitz School of, uh, you know, and she said that that was a good system for learning spoken, you know, to get people speaking the language. But uh, you know, to actually have conversational Sanskrit, uh, I can do it. I know I can do it, but it's just getting it, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, the reluctant, I don't know why I'm reluctant to, or why don't, don't to make more progress in that, in that aspect of things. I think we uh, need more time, you know. Anyway, it's all takes, you know, I mean, the thing is, I, I don't think that you're not learning anything in the Sanskrit, uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, I'm pretty sure, you know, you may think that you're not, uh, you know, but as you, as things get repeated, as things come up again and again, uh, I can't, I can't believe that you're not uh, not you're not learning something just by hearing it. Yeah, of course I'm learning, but uh, uh, all the time I see, like you already pointed out, we have seen this uh, world many times, but I never uh, noticed it previously. It was the first time I noticed when I asked, <laughs> because too much too much new stuff. Yeah, uh, what can you do? That's the way. This is how I analyze this, <laughs> the situation. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, this, uh, you know, what can I say? I say it's a, it's a challenge. You know, Sanskrit. You know, the thing is that, they, like I was saying, I was discussing this with with my wife, and uh, saying that you know, when you're teaching, then you, the teacher, the tendency of the teacher is want to teach everything in the one lesson, <laughs> everything. <laughs> you know, to have patience to do everything. You know, to 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 to, you know, to take it easy and to just you know bit by bit you know one one but piece, one i piece. think every everybody is really happy also because we are reading real stuff i mean tikas not only gita but also tikas and with your help we understand so i think everybody is extremely happy okay good <laughs> all right well then that's good then we've then, then the concluding verse is sarve bhavantu sukinaha sarve santu niramaya Sarve Padrani Pashantu Makas Chidukha Bhag Babit Purnam Madaha Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnam Eva Vashishate Sarve Shang Swastir Bhavatu Sarve Shang Shantir Bhavatu Sarve Shang Purnang Bhavatu Sarve Shang Mangalam Bhavatu Om Shantihi Shantihi 
Shanti Hari Om Tat Sat Jai Jai Sri Radhe Jai Jai Sri Radhe Jai Jai Sri Radhe Shanti Nitai Gaur Hari Gaur